Today we're looking at a uh, Mr. Coffee single serve coffee maker. Uh, the model is a uh, BVMC KG5. Um, that's this particular model. Uh, most single serve coffee makers function the same way. The problem that we're having with this is that the brew, when you push um, the brew button, it either isn't getting water or there's something clogging the feed tube and it's not brewing an entire cup or any cup at all sometimes. So we'll be taking it apart today to see what's going on inside of it. Um, the only way to really access it is through the bottom here. You have six screws, it looks like. They're, these here, down here are Phillips. Phillips, Phillips. These up here are uh, special hex screws. You can get the special hex uh, screwdriver for that, or what I did is you can just take a common flathead screwdriver and there's a little itty bitty uh, circle part in the middle of the hex, which you can't see because it won't focus. Um, there you kind of see it, but you just bend that circle part sideways and you can get a flathead screwdriver in there and turn that screw. Once you get the bottom panel off there, you will be able to see the control board right here. And on this particular model and brand, there is a screw right in the middle of the control board, which is right down in there, that shiny one right there. There's just a single screw holding the control board in. So you'll have to take that screw out and disconnect all of these wires. And this too. Um, again, this is on this particular model, the wires are already labeled to where they go. Like this one's white to the white connector, red to the red connector, black to the black connector. Um, and these over here, they only fit in one place. So if you're doing one that isn't this particular brand or model, yours may not be labeled and you may want to take some masking tape and label where each little wire goes because it is very important not to get these mixed up or else you could cause a fire or it could just burn up. Okay, now that we got the control board out and all the wires disconnected, I went ahead and disconnected this hose here which went to this pump. This pump provides air which pushes the water out once it's hot out the top here. It doesn't pull it like a normal pump like you think it would. This actually pushes air down this hose providing pressure to the top of the chamber in the top of the chamber inside of here and pushes the water out the bottom and out this part right here. And we'll see a better representation of that once I get the rest of this off. The next step is to take out these three screws, one, two, and three, and then we take the side panel off. Now that we got the side panel off, we can begin to understand how it actually works. We have the water tank that's normally up here, it supplies the water. The water comes down around here to this valve. This valve opens when you push the brew button and needs to supply the kettle here with water. So when that valve opens, the water comes down or comes through the hose in the back there, comes around the side and into the kettle with this hose right here goes into the kettle. At the same time that it's doing that, this other large hose on the other side provides uh, an escape for the, the air that's in there because you can't have a closed chamber or else the water won't flow in. So this hose allows air to flow out while the water is flowing in and this valve has to open for that to happen. So the air comes out through the valve and down to the bottom here where it just escapes actually into the drip pan. So once the water is into the kettle, the kettle heats up. Down here's the electrical connections for the heater. Up top we have three wires here depending on the model you have there may be more. 
Um, these connections up here detect how much water is in the kettle itself and it will close this valve when it reaches the proper level, whichever level you select on the control panel there. So once the water is in, it's heated up, there is a, on the other side, let me turn it over. There are sensors here to, detect, to sense how much, how hot it is. This is a safety sensor that detects the exterior temperature of the kettle. This bottom here and this little one right here, the black wires, uh, actually senses the temperature of the water itself. So that will sense the water temperature and turn off the heater when it's at the right temperature. When the water is at the right temperature, our valve at the bottom, that I explained at the beginning, turns on, provides pressure to the hose. The hose comes up and around, provides pressure at the top of the kettle. Now at the same time this is happening, our, our hose here that allowed our air to escape when the water was coming in, this valve will have to close in order for the pressure provided by the pump at the bottom to be able to push the water out the bottom of the kettle, which it's not that hose, it's this one right here. So when the water comes out that hose, it comes up and goes out there. So the pump that actually pumps the water out of the machine doesn't pull the water, it's pushing it with the air pressure on top of the kettle. It's not pulling it out the bottom. Okay, now that we know how this machine works basically, we can start testing components to see if any components have failed, giving us uh, the issues that we're having with the water coming out. First thing we're going to test is this valve right here, which allows the water to flow in to the kettle. If this valve doesn't open, obviously water is not going to get into this kettle here. So we follow the two white wires down, and I already have them hooked up to the ohm meter here. I have it set to 20k, and we're seeing a pretty good reading. So we're pretty sure that that valve is fine. Now we're going to test the other valve that allows air to escape on the other side. So that's the water supply valve. And this valve over here is the one that allows the air to escape when the water is coming in. And those are two red wires, which we will hook up to our own meter there and there. And again, we're still showing a pretty good reading. So we are pretty confident that this valve and our other valve are not the issue. And one of the, the most common reasons why these things uh, don't perform the way they should is that there's line buildup or debris caught in these uh, supply tubes and the, the uh, air pressure tube here and the other tube that comes up and goes to the actual spout. So we can physically examine those tubes to see if there's any debris or if they're cracked in any way. Um, especially you want to definitely look at the tube, the, the hose here that supplies the pressure to push the water out of the kettle. If there's any cracks or the, it's, the fittings aren't tight, the pressure will escape and it won't provide enough pressure to push out that water. So definitely expect this little small tube here. Um, any of these other tubes would probably leak water if they were broken. But go ahead and visually inspect all of them just in case. Another reason for the, the problem that we're having is that the pump down here that pushes the water out fails. Uh, it's got this connection that plugs into the control board. This is where the hose comes in. Um, but if this pump fails, you will most likely know it because it won't make any sound when it's trying to pump. It'll just be completely quiet. So we're pretty sure that this is also not the issue because when this was all together and plugged in and everything, we could hear this pump running, trying to pump water out and there was just nothing coming out. So we're pretty sure that's not the issue either. 
So if you haven't found anything wrong with it so far, like I haven't, there is one other option. That inside our kettle here, there's lime buildup or calcium buildup or our level detection probes on the top are not working properly. So we're going to have to take that out. And this is how you do it next. Okay, with the unit flipped over like this, there is one screw down in there, one screw down in there, one screw down in there, and one screw, yep, down in there. You'll have to take those first screws out, and that should take off this entire bottom piece here. Okay, so we have our four screws out. You just basically lift all the way up. Got some wires caught up in there. There. All the wires out. There. We got one more stuck in there. There we go. Okay. Now we got that off. We see a better view. Now our unit's upside down here. Better view of where the water comes out once it's done heating. And these are our two uh, vent hoses right here. This one and that one are vent because they just vent out into the drip tray here. And these are our heater um, supply connections right there that supply the power to heat the water. And in order to get this kettle out, you will need to take out not these screws, but the ones that are actually screwed into this plastic piece. And I believe there's Four. There's one, two, three, and yep, four. Those will have to come out in order to get the kettle out. So now we got all four of those screws out. We're going to, have to disconnect all the hoses um, to the kettle. The kettle's loose, obviously. All the hoses have these little zip ties to them to make sure they stay on. You can just slide those up the hose. I use needle nose pliers and then gently pull off the hoses. They're going to be really stuck on there because they were zip tied on. Okay, now I got the bottom hose off here. We need to take off. There's going to be three top hoses. This will be two big ones. This is our vent hose, our supply hose that pushes the water out. And our water supply hose on the other side right there. So it's going to be one, two, two big hoses and one little hose right in the middle. Those are going to have to come out. Or come off, sorry. Okay, now that we got all the tubes and uh, connections disconnected, we can pull out the, uh, the kettle here. And if you look in the top of it, I believe that is some type of calcium or lime buildup. And that might be causing our problem. So we're going to have to take off what one, two, three, four, six, the six screws here. With uh, I believe they have yeah they have nuts on them. Take those off, and we're going to have to get in there and clean that out. Because if one of these, if this makes a connection with this one, or this makes a connection with this one, it'll send a false signal to the computer or the control board saying that. The kettle's full, and it will go ahead and heat. In reality, there is no water in it, and we'll see it better. Um, we'll see it better once we get inside there how these probes actually work. But yes, the next step is to take off those screws and take off the lid here. Okay, we took out all the screws. We take off the lid here. We see the probes that measure the water level, and they are covered in what appears to be. A lime lime scale and we're gonna have to clean those off um, maybe some delimer and just a lot of scrubbing will clean that up and we will have this uh, machine working once again so we'll get those cleaned up so now we got our uh, kettle here cleaned up and I forgot to show you guys before I cleaned it out, but also inside of here, there was a lot of calcium 
or lime build up in there. Um, this whole thing should be black, like it is now. Um, it was almost completely white with lime, and there's our temperature probe right there. Um, but all that would need to be cleaned out, or else it will not function properly or function inefficiently and give you satisfactory or insatisfactory results. Um, so anyway, I cleaned it up. It's all nice and clean now. Got the probes all clean, the lid all cleaned up. Took a bit of scraping, but I got it all clean. And now we can look at how this actually works. Now this sits inside that, like we took it off, like this. Now as the water comes in, it fills it up, fills up the kettle there. And when it touches, when the water touches these two right here, it tells the control board, okay, we're halfway full. Cut the, uh, close the valve and close the valve and starts heating. If you selected, okay, I want a full cup, the control board ignores this signal, the signal from here, and the water fills up, up and up and up and up until it reaches this probe. Once the water comes in contact with this probe and this probe at the top here, it tells the control board, okay, we're completely full, uh, close the valve and it closes the valve and then it starts heating and you get a full cup. Okay, now once you get got everything back together, um, you want to make sure that all the wires that you ran are not, get the camera focused here, do not touch the kettle itself. Because that kettle obviously will get very, very hot. And if any of these wires are up against it, they will, even though they have the heat protective coating on them, they will eventually uh, melt and then you'll be in big trouble because you'll have to replace them. Okay, we have it plugged in. We have the, the uh, water tank back on it. And now we're going to try this out to see if it works. Okay, we're going to push. Actually, first we're going to select our size here. We'll do big or do the largest one here. And we'll do room we here kick on we can see our water flowing into the tank or the uh, the kettle there we can actually hear it too okay it's full and now it's heating up you can hear the water inside boiling and we're getting water, but how much water are we going to get? Pretty good! Much better than what it was doing before. Before, on full cup, we were getting at most a half a cup, and that's pretty close to full. So that's pretty good. So that's all that was wrong with it was our kettle was kind of limed up and after cleaning it, we are good to go.